Yes, and they see you are the living individual, but right now you uh, are operating under a false name, a fraudulent name. And, uh, well, it's the false name is because uh, they've got you thinking that uh, your given name is your first name. But really, your first name, as uh, anything comes out, or like the chicken and the egg scenario, uh, the family came first, then the little child came along. So you had to have the merging of the two families to produce the offspring. So the families come first. That is your first name that is given to you, is your family name. Then you have a middle name. Then you have your last name or given name, which is also, since it's classified as last, that is your permanent name. You can always change your middle name and your uh, family name and start a new family if you want to. But you should always keep your given name unless you really hate it and uh, then uh, you go and get, but you have to go through a court to have that name changed because this document, this certificate of live birth, your hospital birth certificate, these are documents that are posted out here with the post registry into the book of life. And the book of life that you're posted into is with the post office. Okay? These other false registries at the county and everything else, they are for the corporate world. They're governmentals. So your real existence is with the post office and these documents, the certificate of live birth or your uh, birth certificate, hospital birth certificate, are for inheritance purposes. This is your right of claim of inheritance from both sides of your family, your mother's family, and that's why she has to put down her maiden name, her family name first, and then her middle name, and then her uh, given name or permanent name, last name. Now, they've got us filling out all the forms wrong. My name is Divine Patrick. I don't have a middle name. Now, when you go into court or you get a traffic ticket, you put down, like in my case, Divine Patrick but they're looking for Patrick Divine. Two different entities right there. And if you fill out a post office form 4232, which is a uh, rural customer delivery instructions, and you fill that out correctly with your name on there and your post box, which is your four digit uh, post box number that normally they have behind your five digit zip code. Okay? And see, every post office has the capability of 9,999 uh, boxes. So we have to put that down. Then we become, and if we use our living name, then we put down our post box. We are the postmaster of our post box, our rural post box. So all this garbage, yeah. Wrong, wrong. Okay. You use your post box. Okay, that's yours. That gives you your title of 
postmaster. Because that's your post box. When you get the form, that 4232, look at it. Read the whole thing. You will see that you have some powers that you didn't know you had. Like you could do certified mailings and registered mailings. And I will go into a little more in depth on that. Uh, that it doesn't cost you as much as what everybody thinks it is. Okay? The post office has that assigned to your mailbox. Ask them, what is my four-digit rural post box number? It's already assigned. You just have to claim it. See, it's a, all, a lot of this is all about us coming in and providing the right claim for things that were set there for our benefit. Our yes. And see, that is also a bank routing number. So when they want to send something to you, they can send that through on that bank routing number under a registered delivery. All bank routing numbers are nine digits. Even your EIN numbers are a bank routing number. See, there's been a lot of misunderstanding about the usage of uh, these different numbers. But it's, this whole system is about banking. And like I told the guys the other day, I said, Bible, B-I-B-L-E. Now, that's normally written in all capital letters. Well, if something is written in all capital letters, there has to be a word behind each one of those letters. And my interpretation of what that means is barter instruments of banking, laws, and enforcement. And then when you look at the Bible and you start studying the stories, you see, hey, yeah, it's all about banking out here. And they see the enforcement of the banking regulations. That's all that that Bible is. There wasn't as much blood and guts as everybody wants to make out in that book. <clears throat> and justice is basically just exchange. That's why the Department of Justice, to provide the just exchange of uh, an item. Now, everybody thinks that we're dead out here, okay? They've been operating with that. They think we got a dead person or whatever. We, with the certificate of live birth and with our name written the wrong way, the government created a corporate entity, a United States, U.S., or slash uh, C.A., or in my case, I.A., corporate entity by the name of Patrick Devine. Now, he basically was assigned a social security number. He was also signed a registration number uh, with the state registrar for the corporation entity. Now, these corporate accounts are held in a postal office, postal treasury office, and this goes all the way back to 1789 when they set up the, de the treasury department. There was the secretary of the treasury over four different offices. The first office was the registrar. The second office was the auditors. 
The third office was the comptroller, and the fourth office was the treasurer. Now, this whole thing was out of the post office treasury department. This is not the department of the treasury, the corporate side of the ledger. This was the du jour side of the American people's treasury. Lawful assets are held in that uh, treasury. But we have basically turned over our inheritance over to the corporations under our corporate entity. Now, we know he's an artificial person. But the other corporations can only utilize him while he is in a state of living. And if you go into some of the uh, documents that I have on the group site, and I'll tell you right now, the group site is known as We the People, all one word, underscore shareholders with an S on the end of it. And that's a Yahoo group. And I'm going to be pulling it down here in probably about another three or four days. Because I'm tired of bickering with people out here. And people just don't want to get the information. But... You can go in and download the files, especially I would download them out of the first two folders in the file section. That's the latest stuff that I have. And it's all about your name. You just didn't know who you were. And your parents didn't know who they really were either. Because they put down the wrong name on the document. And this has been in the process for a long time to set this scenario up. The surname goes all the way back to Edward IV in 1436, I think it was, out of England to try and set this scenario in place. But up until that point in time, uh, you went to uh, the Kennedy clan. And then you went and found the individual that you wanted to talk to within the Kennedy clan. So you went to family first, then to the individual second. And see, that's where we've been uh, fighting the wrong stuff. And there is a bunch of infiltrators out here in the world of gurus, patriotic gurus out here putting false information out. Stay away from all forms except the required ones that you need, like an SS-4 to terminate your uh, Social Security person. An SS-4, you do not use a form to apply for a foreign grant or trust. You just pick up the phone and call upon them to set that up, and that's out of Philadelphia. That's where the original du jour postal treasury department was located, was Philadelphia. And there's still a uh, major hub there in Philadelphia on the du jour side, because that's where your foreign grant or trust will come from, and that's more than likely where you will have uh, your uh, deposit carry, A-R-Y, assets placed after you close down your depository accounts in the corporate world. I'm going to take a break here, and if you guys want to ask any questions on this before I continue on, because I know I've thrown a lot of information out here. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, you probably got a piece of mail with it already on there. Okay, just look at it. Okay, that's a zip code. You got the five digit and then a four digit. So you should probably already have a piece of mail that has that number right on it. Now, the number that you probably won't know is the route number. Now, you will have to ask the post office for that route number. What is the route number of my mail delivery person? Normally they have up to, I think, up to nine routes. So it should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. And then the rest of it you put down. Uh, your house number, which would be, and then your street name, like in my case, the uh, house number is 18463, and then street name is 208 uh, Avenue. Okay, don't fight it. That's for their postal system. It's going to come in care of, but when you have your correct name on there, which in my case, last name is Patrick. First name is divine. That's the way you've got to fill this form out. And then you sign it appropriately down below. Divine, colon, Patrick, or whatever you want to do. In my case, and then date it. Uh, if you don't want any other people to receive mail, like Patrick Divine to receive mail there, you just write in uh, inner names of the people who may receive mail at your address. You write none in there. I don't want to receive any more mail for Patrick Divine. He's, he doesn't live here. Now, you have put this into the post office, and I also have a document up there about uh, an affidavit of the living individual with the correct name. You can give this, that affidavit, after you've signed and put your two witnesses, and your two witnesses are your right and left index fingers. Who else knows you? Nobody. Joe Blow down the street don't know you or shit. But your fingers do because they're your outer extremity boundary markers. That's your two witnesses. <clears throat> So you put your two witnesses, your index fingers, and your autograph on there, and then you emboss that. And then you give that, along with this document, to your local postmaster. And then you'll also send it to the other postmasters that you need to send uh, your documents to. Put them on notice. Now, I want all my undelivered mail delivered to me. Because, see, we probably got undelivered mail that never came to the living individual. We were only receiving the corporate entity's mail. Yeah. And when you turn around and uh, refuse any other mail under that corporation's name, then basically that uh, goes away. Now the post office will try and say, but we've got to deliver this here, uh, and then basically you just throw it in the junk, as if you never got it. 
and you throw it in your dead mail. Dig a hole out there underneath your post box and drop it in there. Here's your dead mail, corporate entity. But see, the problem is then, okay, you go into court. People go in the court and say, my name is Patrick, and I'm of the family to mine. What did you just do? You just gave your name as Patrick being the first name. You just gave your family name as being your last name. You just gave life to your corporate entity. Forget the answer of Ego's trust, okay? Forget your living will, okay? These are private documents. You make those private documents up however you want to. I'm not going to go into trust law or anything like that because this really doesn't apply. There is no trust in this country. This is the most untrustworthy country in the world, besides England. So stay away from trust because you will just screw yourself up. Okay? Well, but when you understand that your certificate of live birth or your hospital birth certificate is a false registry. And I sent you the document there uh, with the definition out of Valentine's Dictionary on false registry. I know I'm, I'm not at my mom's and I won't be over there until in the morning. Yeah, I don't have internet where I'm at right now. Uh, but, uh, false registry <clears throat> is they see the whole crux of the matter. In reality, I mean, it's that simple. Two things. You've got the false, you've got a false name that you've been grown to believe because, uh, the Rockefellers, they seek controlled, uh, or, uh, yeah, I think it's the Rockefellers. They basically controlled the educational system in this country from the early 19 teens. The public education system. To groom the little minds of the people into using the false name scenario. And a false res registry, I'll read it here. The term usually, and they put the word usually in there, applied to the registration of a vessel in violation of the federal registry statutes, which provide that if any certificate of registry or record is fraudulently or knowingly used for any ship or vessel, not then actually entitled to the benefit thereof, accordingly to the true intent of the act, such vessel or such ship or vessel shall be forfeited to the United States with her tackle, apparel, and furniture. American uh, 48, American Jurisprudence, first uh, volume, ship, section 23, and that's shipping Title USC, uh, Title 46, Shipping, Section 23 is where that came from. Okay? Now, we, they see our entity is classified, and that is what the Shipping Act, Title 46, is all about. When you go in there, it talks about the age of 25. It talks about, uh, they see, uh, seamanship. 
merchant seamen. Okay? Your entitlements. You were supposed to have access to your funds when you turned 18 to become a life boatman. You weren't supposed to be able to claim your inheritance until you turned 21. That is right in the Constitution of this country. It has never been properly enacted to change it to 18. So the right to vote in this country was never properly en enacted. It was annotated. The same thing with giving a woman the right to vote. It was never enacted into law. It's an annotated law. An animated law. A cartoon for the corporate entity to control and they see get more women to vote in all the wrong stuff. To split the families up. To destroy the family farms. To destroy the country. You have to look beneath what their true intent was. And basically, it wasn't to take our assets, it was to deprive us of our assets. And then to take what we basically make out of our back pocket and voluntarily give over to them. You can't fill out a 1040 form. There's no way in hell you can. You don't have access to what the accounts are. Income tax is a tariff tax on the usage of the Federal Reserve product known as the Federal Reserve dollars, debt money, under the black seal. You have no lawful, you have no accounting of what debt money you actually used. So you could never properly fill out a 1040 form. But all these people have been filling them out and paying taxes. Basically, they've been voluntarily giving money over to the corporation to pay their taxes. Our corporate entity is getting like less than 1% usage for his assets. That is below the taxing gradient. So he owes no taxes. You as the living owe no taxes because they cannot tax a man's labor. But people have been looking at this and arguing the wrong point, and then they've been coming in and using the wrong name in their argument. So you get your name changed the correct way, you get this into the postmasters to correct the registration, you will notify the Secretary of State, the Attorney General, and uh, the State Registrar about the fraudulent uh, registry of that certificate of live birth. Now, if they do not change that, within three days' time, they are committing an act of obstructing justice. And that's another American jurisprudence law. You can look that one up in Valentine's, too. Okay, I'm going to take another break here and see if there's any questions out here. Anything. Yes. The postmaster of that post office, that uh, postal office that is holding that registration document. Well, you've got, you've got, uh, basically three or four of them, okay? 
if you're living in your birth state, then you've only got about uh, uh, three, okay? Your state capital, and basically you can find out the zip code for your state capital. Uh, just find out where the Secretary of State or the Attorney General, and you can see if it's the same zip code. They have the same zip code. That is the state of whatever postal office. It's not a U.S. post office. You can verify that by going into your capital and uh, doing a search for U.S. post offices in your state capital. I did that for Des Moines. They have five U.S.